welcome to episode 46 of the Naked Eye Podcast. This is Nathan Oxenfeld coming to you today in November 2020. And wow, it has been quite a ride since we released our documentary last month called Vision 2020 From Eyesight to Insight. Uh, you may have seen that we had a big event, the Holistic Vision Summit on October 8th, which ended with the premiere of our movie that we've been working on over the past year and a half. So, so glad so many people have already gotten to see it and really appreciate all the feedback we've gotten so far. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, you can still see it at vision2020movie.com. It's for rent or for purchase. Uh, but I imagine we'll also be doing another free screening sometime before the end of the year. So keep your eyes peeled for some event coming up maybe in December. And there's still a few things we're working on with the movie in terms of adding subtitles and translating it into different languages and possibly even getting it up on some more streaming services to make it more available as well. But for now, the best place to go is vision2020movie.com. And in addition to just all the amazing things that have happened from putting this movie out, one of the interesting side benefits is that it's helped create some new connections and help with networking within the natural vision world. And one example of this is how I met today's guest, Dr. Ainoa de Federico. When we were in the process of editing the film, I received an email from Ainoa saying that she had found out about the project through one of our mutual colleagues and she was interested in getting involved. Now we had already done our filming, so we, we unfortunately weren't able to get her in the film to do an interview with her. But since she reached out to me and made this connection, I felt really called to loop her in and get her involved. So I invited her to be a speaker at our vision conference this year, which also happened last month, all virtual this time as opposed to being in person which actually made it easier for people like Ainoa to uh, participate and attend because she's based in Europe. So I got this email from her last year saying that she's a professor in sociology at the University of Toulouse in France, and that she's also a natural vision trainer, and that she's in the process of conducting research about natural vision improvement at the university. So I was really intrigued not only to learn about who she is and what she's working on today, but also more about her background and how she got into this work and this really interesting combination of approaches. So getting to attend her talk at the Vision Teachers Conference last month was really my first experience to really get to know her on that level and really get a sense of her background and her story and really her specialties in this, in this work. And I love how she takes this psychosomatic approach to natural vision improvement um, some of which is based on Martin Brofman's work and, and others who are talking about the connection of certain personality types or even certain attributes of ourselves and even certain emotions that are connected with physical vision problems. So she gets into that a little bit in our talk today about, you know, what are these specific emotions and feelings and personality traits associated with presbyopia, for example, um, and how she could change the personality and the emotion as a way to change the vision as well. And in addition to the research that she's conducting at the university in France, I know is also embarking on this amazing project called the Visionary Children's Project. So shortly after our interview, she flew to Oaxaca, Mexico to begin this amazing new endeavor that involves sharing natural vision improvement with underprivileged communities or communities in poverty or that can't access traditional eye care. And as opposed to just like shipping glasses down there, she's actually going down there to empower these children and parents and teachers how to take control of vision problems in a more natural way and learning simple relaxation based techniques that aren't just going to be a quick fix or a little band-aid like glasses that cover up the symptoms and then you just need stronger glasses and then what? Instead, she's providing these children with this lifelong gift of natural vision. And this is so close to my heart because ever since I got into this work, I've always dreamed of doing something like that. 
And I actually was already in communication with one of my students in Mexico in a different part of Mexico, um, moreover by Guadalajara, about maybe me going down there and sharing some of this stuff with some schools down there. Uh, but that was right before coronavirus and that kind of got halted. And so it's really amazing that even amidst the coronavirus, it's not stopping I know of. She's, you know, conducting these classes in a safe way with masks and social distancing. Um, but she's just getting after it. And it just makes me so excited to see her pursuing this. And it makes me really, really excited about the possibilities that it's going to open up in the future around the world, not just in Oaxaca, but in many countries all around the world about really sharing this gift with people. And that's what both she and I have in common is this really strong passion and desire to do that. And so I'm really excited to do that in the form of today's episode to introduce you to Ainoa. And I can foresee that this is going to be just the first of more uh, collaborations between her and I. Um, I already have her scheduled to be a guest reader on the Better Eyesight podcast for next season in 2021. And she also got me involved in her upcoming Natural Vision Forum. Earlier this year, she did a Spanish-speaking online forum with dozens of vision teachers and had a huge turnout, you know, like over 20,000 people attending and interacting with this work. So based off the success of the Spanish-speaking one, now she's getting an English speaking one together, once again, with dozens of, of vision teachers, myself included. So we talk a little bit about that in our chat as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that coming in the next month or two, probably in the very beginning of 2021. And since I'm on the panel, I'll be promoting it and letting you know more about it as we get closer to that time. Before I hand you over to Ainoa, I do want to let you know about two upcoming things that I'm offering in December and January. In December, I'm leading a five-day vision transformation. Earlier this year, I did a two-day virtual vision retreat in May, and it was really successful. People were getting some profound changes in just two days. And so I'm really excited to more than double that and do a five-day virtual retreat, except it's going to be a little bit less meeting time each day. The two-day one was a little bit much crammed into just two days. So we're going to spread it out a little bit more over five days, and it's going to give you this opportunity to go without glasses for more than maybe you ever have and have this new accountability and momentum from this more immersion style way of learning natural vision improvement. So you can learn more about that and sign up at integraleyesight.com slash virtual. And that's going to be from Wednesday, December 2nd to Sunday, December 6th of 2020. And I've already got a couple people signed up and there is a limited amount of space for that one. So um, if you're interested in joining, definitely hop on that soon. And beyond that, starting in January, I'm going to be getting my next six month vision improvement program started. I just wrapped up my, my last one this month in November and led over 40 people through this process over a six month training course. Um, not only with videos and group classes, but one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. And it's always so inspiring to see people integrating this stuff in their lives, you know, in the five day or the, or the shorter immersion ones, it's like a crash course. And then I kind of send you off to, to keep on going on your own. But with the six month program, we get to check in over this, you know, half a year or more. And it's just amazing to, to watch you grow and watch you change and watch you have these discoveries and aha moments. Uh, so this last group was amazing to lead and to get to know these people. And I'm really excited to uh, start another group up in the new year. So you can learn more about that at IntegralEyesight.com slash six month, the number six and then month. Or if you just go to the main site, IntegralEyesight.com and you can navigate around in the, in the bar and the menu and you can find all this stuff as well about the documentary, these podcasts, my videos, these events that are coming up. So that's a good you know, main place to get all this information. But for now, I'm very pleased to introduce you to Dr. Ainoa de Federico. I'm very happy to be joined today by Ainoa de Federico from France, who's in Mexico at the moment. I'm really glad we get to link up today and have a little chat and get to introduce you to my audience and not only learn about your background in this natural vision work, and uh, also what you've been working on, you've got a lot of amazing projects going on right now. 
And so we, we just got a little bit of a, a background and introduction uh, in the intro, but do you want to go ahead and uh, share a little bit about yourself? Uh, first of all, welcome to the Naked Eye podcast. I know I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And it's really a pleasure and an honor to be part of the Naked Eye po podcast. I think you are doing an amazing work uh, by yeah sharing, diffusing, educating all these ideas of uh, natural vision improvement. And yeah, in this 2020 year, uh, because of the century of uh, ba Dr. Bates' uh, work, but also because of the global context and uh, having to stay a lot of like, indoors and not being exposed to sunlight and having less options of movement. I, yeah, I think it's really amazing that you are having all these initiatives um, to share all these useful ideas with as many people as possible. So you'd like me to introduce myself? Would you rather have a more personal introduction, professional introduction, a mix of both? What would you like me to do? <laughs> well, in, in our, in our pre-chat, I was pretty intrigued to, uh, to learn about how you were introduced to this, this stuff so early on in your life. So maybe, maybe we could kind of start there with, you know, the, the, uh, the beginning of Inoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Well, um, I was born with, uh, well, I was born cross-eyed, so I probably look like this, uh, with amblyopia, which means my brain didn't consider the information coming from one eye. So we could say I was half blind in a way, and I was very myopic, short-sighted in the other eye. And uh, I come from a family of uh, doctors. There's been generations and generations of medical doctors. Uh, well, my father isn't, but my grandfather and my great-grandfather and everyone else behind and uncles. And anyway, there's lots of doctors in the family. And when my parents noticed uh, that I had such big issues with my vision so young, when they were visiting my grandparents in Granada, uh, my parents asked my grandparents, would you happen to know a good ophthalmologist so that we can bring our child? Um, and so he mentioned a professor at the University of Granada. Uh, there were several professors at the University of Granada who were aware, um, so this was in 73, <laughs> of, uh, well, the possibility of improving your vision with stimulation and exercises in a natural way. I actually discovered relatively recently that uh, Bates's works were introduced into Spanish by uh, Dr. Ruiz Arnau as early as 1924. So yeah, it's actually more of a surprise that so few people know about it nowadays um, than, yeah, because the, the works were introduced very early. And anyway, so I'm six months old, we're visiting my grandparents and my grandfather sends me uh, with my parents to this professor at the university. And when she saw us coming, of course, I don't remember anything of this, but this is a story that my parents have been telling me at basically every birthday that I can remember. Like, you were born like this and na na na. So they, they have like three stories they always tell me at my birthday, and this is one of them. So uh, when they came into the, uh, to the office of the doctor with me, she was like, why do you bring me this such young kid, such young, young child, a baby? Yeah. And then she looked at me and she was like, oh, it was such a good idea that you brought her like so, so early. And so this uh, professor um, mentioned um, several stimulation exercises that my parents should do and I should wear patches and things. And my parents applied it diligently and lovingly. And by the time I was one year old, I had perfect eyesight. Uh, I saw very well um, near, far, by day, by night, with my left eye, with my right eye. Wow. I always remember having had a 3D vision. So I, I, grew, I grew with a very strong identity of uh, having a very good eyesight mm -hmm. and knowing that I had improved my eyesight naturally uh, mm -hmm. very early. And uh, it was a pride. Lots of people would tell me like, wow, I know you see so well so far and you see so precise so near and you see so clearly by night. And I was like, this is part of my identity. Yeah. So fast forward, I come from Spain. I was born in Barcelona. And when I was, what, in 95, 22, I went to France with uh, an international exchange program, uh, a European exchange program. I went to France for my studies um, in sociology, actually. And uh, 
The second year I was in France, um, one day I woke up and I saw very blurry. I actually saw double and I panicked. I literally panicked the day before I had perfect sight and the day after I wasn't um, able to function. Uh, it, the blur was so big that I was afraid that I, I wouldn't, uh, that I would like fall if I would, um, yeah. Uh, I, I look for my words in English, sorry, anyway, that I wouldn't be able to handle things. So I panicked. I called my mother in Spain. She was like a thousand kilometers away. And, and I told her how afraid I was and not seeing clearly. And she was even more panicked than me. And she's like, don't call me. I cannot do anything so far. Call an ophthalmologist. I'm like, of course, this is such a great idea. <laughs> so I, I took the yellow pages. So we're really talking about last century or last millennium. <laughs> mm -hmm. I took the yellow pages and I started looking for ophthalmologists called one after the other until someone had uh, an appointment that they could give immediately to me, which really was a very bad idea. Usually when a restaurant is empty, usually it's not a very good restaurant and you should go to the restaurants that are packed with people. Yeah, with a well, lot. maybe with, exactly. So maybe with other kinds of professionals, that's also a good idea. But I was so, so panicked and such in a hurry that I was like, whatever, the first person that can take me in. Yeah, I, I mean, so... Uh, it was winter. It was very cold. I was given an appointment uh, past five, so it was already dark. Um, and I went into a, a, a building that was very old, lots of marble, very cold, dim light, uh, strange situation, never been there. Uh, I had to wait. The, the doctor barely even talked to me or looked at me. I, and so the, the interaction was not welcoming or warm. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm mentioning this because all of these are also conditions that are not favorable for a good natural vision. Um, I didn't know at the time, but it happened to be this way. So I get in front of the doctor when it's my turn and I tell him, I see blurry, I see double. What happened yesterday or the day before I could see very well? The question goes one ear, goes out the other ear. He's not interested uh, at all um, in finding the cause of the change. He just sits me into a machine where I can see letters and numbers and he's changing the, 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 the lenses and I'm supposed to tell when I see the best. Mm -hmm. So I do and he writes down on a piece of paper that I have so, so many diopters of uh, astigmatism and myopia. And I'm like, okay, but why do I have no, them now? And right. I didn't yesterday, yeah? Yeah. The question goes in one ear, out the other. He just asked me to pay for his fee and sends me out. I'm like, what? I, this, I, I'm not buying this. I, I want to understand and know why yesterday I could see perfectly and today I don't. Um, I am a person who sees very clearly by day, by night, close and far, etc. I mean, I, I was holding on to my strong identity. And so I was furious out of this uh, consultation. I, I did pay and said goodbye in a very polite way. But as soon as I was out, I, uh, I destroyed the prescription, threw it at the garbage, and I went home and started calling all my friends to express my frustration and anger and, uh, and yeah, and be held and contained and, and supported and have people hold space for me and all these things. So as I'm talking to one of my friends, she's like, well, I cannot promise that my doctor, family doctor, not ophthalmologist, that, that he will have a solution, but what I can promise is that he will look what's mm -hmm. going on. So, um, yeah, I went to that uh, appointment and um, he listened carefully to me. It was a sunny day. It was by day. It was still winter, but it was a warmer day. The place where I went, it was a building with lots of uh, natural light and he was very warm and welcoming and he talked to me and listened to me and really checked me and mm -hmm. paid attention. Yeah. And after so, a few minutes, he's like, well, young lady, you have sinusitis. Oh, okay, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So you have an infection that's causing inflammation in the sinuses, and yeah. so they're compressing the eyeball. And because of that tension around the eyeball, it's deforming your ability to focus. I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Now mm -hmm. I have the cause. Now what's the solution? Well, the solution is antibiotics for seven days and then the inflammation will go away and then you're supposed to see normally again. And if you don't, well, come back and we'll look for something else. Right. So I took the antibiotics, the problem was gone. And so I went happily on with my life. 
and didn't go back to the doctor because it was not necessary and never bought glasses the second time either. Um, and I remember having thought uh, how many people may be out there um, that for some reason of a, a cause that's just a, a moment in life, uh, this cause has also deformed or compressed or put tension in the eyeball, it's deforming their vision. Mm -hmm. And if they would listen to the first doctor instead of finding the cause and the solution for the cause, maybe they're wearing glasses the rest of their life. Because once you start wearing glasses, well, you get used to them. But I remember having thought of that, but I was on two other projects. So I went on with what I was doing. And yeah, and, and that thought stayed in the drawer for many years. Right. Um, yeah, but I did think about it. Like probably there's lots of people who have just a, a moment of tension in their eyes and they, they're still having the problem because they didn't solve it. So yeah, fast and, forward. And for, in your yeah. case, you know, you, the reason you went in was coming out of a state of panic. And, yeah, and fear and anxiety and, and vision loss and all this confusion. Yeah, you know, people don't always go to the eye doctor, you know, just because they want to or they're, you know, in a good mood, like, oh, I'm gonna go to the eye doctor today. It's sometimes it's actually like, because of some, you know, issue or change, but absolutely. And when you take decisions out of fear, usually they're not the very, the most intelligent uh, solutions. And I'm Right. I, I, I've, I've had the chance, one, well, one of being stubborn and, and <laughs> wanting to find the cause, like that was a very important part for me. Yeah. I, I was already heading into a research career. So finding causes to effects and like this scientific method kind of point of view was important to me. And the other thing that played for me was that I had a very strong identity of being someone who sees clear and knowing almost by birth that it was possible to improve your vision. So, yeah, I had some points there that, that were very helpful for me. And maybe lots of people don't have these uh, like anchor uh, right. possibilities, right? And, and so maybe I, on the other side of that spectrum, you know, my case of my identity was someone who can't see perfectly. Since I had glasses, you know, from a young age and I, I had this experience of all this blur in the distance Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting how we're kind of opposite because you had that identity of this clear vision and then you have this, this vision problem and you're like, this isn't me. Yeah. But for me, to get back like, to me. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I was identifying with the blur and the vision problem. And then I was introduced to the natural vision and stuff. And at first it was like, well, that's not me. You know, that uh, there was like a, a, a separation between like that, version of me with the better vision versus me huh. with the poor vision. And so kind of a yeah. different, different little topic of like the identity aspect, but that's, that's really, really in, unique of you to have that strong anchor of like, no, this is, I'm not going to accept this. This isn't who I am. <laughs> exactly. And this is a very important point for me. And it's probably one of the ingredients that makes my approach kind of specific. Well, we mm -hmm. all have like our own little tips or ideas that are based on our own path. And this is part of uh, the tools that are important uh, to me, uh, playing with the psychological part and identity and how you see yourself and how you see the world. Because for me, it has played a very big role. And in my experience with, uh, in my practice with helping other people see better, I see how useful it is. Maybe it's useful because coming from my experience, I can t uh, talk about it in a clear way and make it useful. Maybe this tool won't be as useful in other people's hands, but in mine it is. So it's a strong, uh, a strong point and uh, yeah, uh, an important part of my approach. Um, anyway, so if I may fast forward still uh, a few years, so I'm 34 now um, and I, I was already a doctor, I was already a professor at the University in Lille in the north of France and I was a guest researcher at the University of, at the Autonomous University of Barcelona. I was born in Barcelona, so I was happy to be back home and um, at the time I was um, editing a special issue for an international journal on sociology. I was part of the editorial board at the time. And uh, so I had to read lots of articles very quickly to get the reviews and the evaluations and feedback to the authors. So I tended to print them like two pages in one a small print so I could read fast and then, mm. uh, yeah, do the work fast. And I started noticing that I had to put the papers far away from me because 
I wouldn't see them properly as I used to. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in the subway in Barcelona, I couldn't read the names of the uh, stops either. So I was like, okay, third time in my life that I have uh, an issue with my vision. Mm -hmm. But by, by then, I had had two experiences of improving my vision and not wearing glasses or not having surgery. And by then, I was also already studying uh, body, the body-mind kind of approach, like how to consider any symptom as a reflection of attention in your consciousness or your emotions. So I was exploring in depth one of the models. There's many. There's uh, really many of them, like in Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. Um, there's uh, Hammer's new medicine that also tells us about it. There's um, bio in French, they call it biodecodage, like biodecoding of the meaning of uh, symptoms. Yeah. Well, there's lots of there's lots of systems. And at the time, I was studying one called the Body Mirror System by Martin Bruffman, who I consider to be my first uh, natural vision improvement trainer later on. And so I was very familiar with this, this um, system of hypothesis. If you have a symptom, it's showing you, it's giving you a message of some inner tension. So, okay, I'm 34, way too early to have problems with uh, presbyopia, um, having trouble to see also uh, at the far. So I go, I take an appointment with another ophthalmologist, yes, but this time I'm not going in to have a prescription for glasses. I just want a diagnosis so I can go to my um, book, uh, my dictionary of symptoms, so I can read mm -hmm. what's the message that my eyes have for me. Mm -hmm. And I gave myself two months to work with this approach. If I would solve the, the issue with this approach, well, end of the story. And if I didn't, then okay, I would go look for glasses or whatever was next to come. And uh, I went to the book. So I was diagnosed presbyopia and astigmatism once more. So I've had like six different symptoms throughout my life. Yeah. And, um, and this time I went to the book, saw what it meant. And it was really a, a big moment of insight. Uh, it was a moment of truth in my life. I actually decided to kind of change careers uh, from that moment on. I've, I've kept being a professor at the university. I still teach at the university, do research at the university. But then I was, um, yeah, focusing on very different topics and it was um, much more, yeah, research for research and academy for academy. And now since that moment, I've been, uh, I have reoriented myself much more into, um, um, I would call it what, um, uh, clinical sociology, experiential, clinical integrative sociology. Basically, what it means is that the way I do research is so that people can become, become more empowered within their own experience and uh, create a better life for themselves. So it's a kind of action research that is supposed to have a direct impact on the well-being of the people that I'm researching. Wow. And uh, well, now on a, I have focused mainly, mostly on natural vision improvement. So... Uh, yeah, and the way I do research is creating experiences within which people can improve their vision. So I give them the theory, I give them the tools, they practice, and they learn, and they also see better. <laughs> and I do this at the university now. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm 34, and my eyes are telling me, metaphorically, you are bored with your life, uh, and you, uh, you are betraying yourself. What you are doing with your own life is not your truly your yeah your deep soul based heart based purpose in life so i had to shake myself and really uh, um, uh, have this deep honest conversation with myself and admit that the career i was uh, pursuing was my grandfather's or my father's dream but it was not mine mm -hmm. so i had now to find what was my real purpose uh, and desire and wish in life and that's when I yeah reoriented um, and well of course this did, didn't happen over overnight it took some time to do the to walk the whole process but yeah. yeah at this moment this is what I'm doing I'm teaching natural vision improvement at the university I'm researching it from the sociology department and the nice thing with sociology is that we are allowed to be interested uh, um, on anything that humans have collectively created. And of course, anything that's relevant for human experience has been 
collectively created by humans or most of it. So anyway, I, 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 I can be interested about any kind of research, yeah. whether it's academic or not scientific, that tells anything that's useful uh, for vision improvement. And so I'm, I'm putting a lot of time and attention and energy into finding as much information as possible from many disciplines, scientific or not scientific, and creating a holistic model that integrates all of those learnings. In my own experience, as I said, the first time I improved my vision, it was through physical stimulation, relaxation, exercises. The second time it was chemical with antibiotics, but there's other things you can do with nourishment, like good mm -hmm. nutrition or detox. And well, when your liver is better, your eyesight is better too. And um, then the third time I um, managed to improve my vision through this metaphorical emotional work. And there's other levels that you can work with identity, psychological level. You can work a lot with sunlight and energy. You can work with habits. You can work balancing both of your eyes and both uh, like your uh, posture. So yeah, my idea is to learn as much as possible, create a useful model that I can then uh, share with more people within the university, uh, within my research, within my classes. And 619, uh, sorry, uh, 2016, I created what most likely it's the first online program in Spanish uh, to improve your vision online. And it happened in a way by chance because I was living in Mexico for a year and a half. And when I went back to France, I was on a sabbatical leave. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to France, I was like, this is such a pity. I'm leaving all these people that probably still want a support for their vision and um, yeah, their health uh, improvement or their well-being. And I will be far away. So what can I do? Well, I can help them online. Yeah. And what started as a service to people in Oaxaca, I very quickly became a global uh, I mean, as soon as you know this, as soon as you put your finger in the online world, it starts growing and spreading. And <laughs> yeah. so now I have followers in over 200 countries and students in over 40 countries, all of the Spanish speaking ones and way beyond. So, yeah, it's uh, it's really magic to be able to share all this information and this opportunity with as many people as possible with the online tools. And I'm very happy to do so now with you and with many other collaborations. Probably I went way too long, <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, hopefully, hopefully I was selling interesting stuff along the way. <laughs> I, I was on the edge of my seat. You know, I, I was really curious to, to learn what that, you know, kind of pivotal moment would be for you and what, what that message was. And um, yeah, uh, a lot of valuable stuff in there. And I think it's amazing that you're, you've got these two, um, realms you're you're reaching people online and you've also got that presence there at the university and and conducting the research there and you know i i studied anthropology and and so i'm wow. <laughs> there with you on kind of like the the soft science approach where mm -hmm. we combine you know the 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 studies and the statistics um with with the less you know harder science stuff too because it, it's it's all valuable information and and we can really mm -hmm learn a lot. And so like, what, what would, um, what would sort of a typical, like, I'm just kind of curious to, if you could just like share a little bit, is it like an actual like course that people sign up for at the university? Is it a class? Is it just like an optional, like extracurricular yeah. thing or like, so at the moment I'm teaching uh, in two different places at the university. Um, the university of Toulouse has a service called uh, the university of free time. Um, and people who attend the classes at the university of free time usually are retired people. Mm -hmm. And actually, I used to teach other things at the university of free time, but I would see all of these people wearing glasses and <laughs> yeah. feeling, yeah. And I'm like, it's obvious that this audience needs <laughs> right. natural vision improvement. So I went to see the responsible person uh, of this service and I, uh, people who, what they teach there, it's, uh, it's well, their discipline and their research. And so I went to see the responsible person and, and told them one of my lines of research is actually natural vision improvement. And I'm watching all of these people, all of them wearing glasses and some of them with, um, uh, with uh, like um, being legally blind with their canes, finding their way. And I'm like, probably I can help them. Would you be interested in me uh, giving a class uh, like next year, giving a class on this topic? And she was, she opened her eyes like big white and she was like, 
but is this possible? Will this work with these people so old? I'm like, yeah, of course, of course it will work. So uh, she was very um, enthusiastic and at the same time, um, like wanting to be very careful. Yeah. And she was like, okay, we will start with one class, like small size and see how mm -hmm. it goes. And if people are happy and this is successful, then we can see uh, how it proceeds. And so it was such big success from the first moment, like the first sequence, that we had to double the space and double the amount of classes. And to, to the date, it's one of the most successful uh, classes offered in the University of Free Time in Toulouse. Like they started telling all the other friends. And so now there's always a waiting list. And well, this year, because of the pandemic, we couldn't, um, we couldn't do it. Right. Uh, and uh, the coming time, the, com the next time probably is going to be online if we cannot do it mm. um, in presence. Um, yeah, so that was the first uh, space where I started teaching natural vision improvement at the university. I had been doing, doing it already for years, uh, privately and yeah. then online in Spanish. And so, yeah, uh, I think it was, what, in 2017? So it was like very quickly after I started teaching online, I started teaching it at the university as well. And then since, uh, let me not be mistaken, I think it was 2018, at the end of 2018, I was asked to participate as well uh, within a master's degree. Um, there's a master in um, um, uh, health education. It's an interdisciplinary master. It depends on the department of sociology, uh, but there's people teaching from anthropology, history, psychology, medicine, and uh, well, the colleague who's um, responsible directing the director of this master at some point in time asked me to, to teach there. So mm -hmm. now I'm teaching at the master's level and also in the University of Free Time. So with two diff very different kinds of public, the ones are very young in their 20s and the others are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it works uh, at any age as we have other, as we've been able to talk about in other places and occasions. So, yeah. That's awesome. It's yeah, that sounds like here in Asheville, they're uh, at the UNC Asheville, um, they have, it's called Ali Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. It sounds just like the free mm -hmm. time thing of it's, it's you know, mainly geared for senior citizens who want to keep learning mm -hmm. things and new skills and, and languages and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and I applied to teach just like you did. I, I went to the board and I said, Hey, I want to teach natural vision improvement, you know, to these people. I feel like it'll help them read better and feel better and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of it just being one person, it was a board of four people mm -hmm. and three out of the four did what, what your your person did they they were like oh my gosh this is so cool this is amazing like mm -hmm. we're, we're so on board with this the fourth one was a retired uh md and mm -hmm. he was not having it at all <laughs> he was like you know we're we can't you know we're, there's no way we're gonna you know you know share this with people like you know it, if it wasn't for him like you know we, we, i would have been able to share this stuff with with all these people in the community but oh so but in the end it was not denied, possible yeah. oh so such a pity we actually the first year although um most of the students were really thrilled and we were having great success i have to say there was one person that thought it was it wasn't acceptable to have this teaching at the university and who sent a three pages long letter like uh, attacking me and uh, yeah it was uh, so we had a kind of tough moment like i had to show all my cv with all my research and right, yeah. everyone everywhere i had been trained the success i had had uh, at other places and we had to put like a a survey so uh, every at every session the students would evaluate the session and say how happy they were what the results they had and she had to defend all of this with a board of like 12 people and um, yeah but in the end like everyone was enthusiastic and it's like we're not going to listen because there's just one person complaining everyone else is happy and it's working so please go ahead and proceed so we've had like uh, the complimentary <laughs> <laughs> experience you and I in, in different in different ways yeah, so yeah. I'm very I'm, I'm very happy uh, to to be able to share this with this kind of public because it's absolutely amazing to see someone that's 
yeah, beyond their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, their health is like sometimes falling apart and they have like less and less possibilities of doing things and being autonomous in their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, see the, to see their faces and their smiles and their emotion when they're, they're able to read again after so many years, they haven't been able to do so or see the landscape and recognize birds and trees. And well, I get goosebumps when I hear these. I, it's happened more than once. Um, great uh, grandparents saying, now for the first time, I can see the smile of my grandchild and recognize the, 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 the face and the expression. It, yeah, it's, it's something that I find absolutely uh, touching and it gives completely, it completely gives meaning to, uh, to the work I do. No? Oh my gosh, well, yeah. or that's one of the elements anyway. So yeah, it, it's really a very exciting and gratifying and happy process when people see better and better with all the freedom, the autonomy, the health, the open possibilities that uh, it creates. It's, it's really a beautiful gift. It's an amazing work that we can do with, uh, with this, really. I, I really do believe that we, we are doing a miraculously beautiful work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the day where I, my mind shifted and my belief or my understanding shifted of I used to you know, it was like, it was like before and after this point, this pivotal mm -hmm. point leading up to that point in my life, my belief was that my eyes and my vision are going to get worse and worse and worse the older I get. Mm -hmm. And when I learned the Bates method stuff that completely 180 and I, mm -hmm. and I changed my belief to my eyes and my vision are going to get better and better and better, better and better and better. Yeah. And that's a novel concept for, I'd say the majority of people. And, yep. and um, some of the stories you've shared today have, have, you know, kind of backed that up and, and really inspiring. But on the other end of that spectrum, as we start to wrap up a little bit is you've got this really amazing project going on um, the visionary children project of, of actually bringing this work to, you know, people at the beginning of their life and young, you know, in, in, in Oaxaca, Mexico. So do you want to uh, share a little bit about sure. that amazing project you got? Yes. And uh, well, bear with me if I cry when I, when I tell about this, uh, this project, because it has a very personal dimension to it. On the one hand, um, I've had the chance to learn about natural vision improvement since birth. Uh, I was six months old and it has been a gift for life. And of course, it's amazing um, to see uh, older people recover their abilities and all the emotion and happiness that comes with it. But when you learn about it, when you're a child, it's a gift for life. Um, and beyond my own personal experience that I'm like wanting to share, there was a very big turning point, um, yeah, making me decide to uh, take a big chunk of my time, money, energy, attention, life uh, to do this. And I hope this keeps growing because actually this year it will be um, the first time that I'm actually being able to put it into practice. Like it has been decided for years in my mind. Last year I was supposed to do it, but I lost my voice for one month. So I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Everything was ready and it was like, oh my gosh. I was voiceless. So this year it will be a big celebration to be able to do it. And I'm, I'm happy again that it's at the, at the century, at the anniversary of uh, natural vision improvement. Probably it's not by chance that it's happening this way. But uh, the, the turning point that made me decide this was that in 2012, which was also uh, a very special year, uh, the Mayas had announced it was the end of the world. And probably for many of us, I don't know about you, but for me, it was the end of my world and the beginning of a new world, a different world. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, to make the story very short, but um, the day I was celebrating my birthday, I was pregnant for the first time in my life. Uh, so I was extremely happy because this has, had been a, a big dream in my life. Mm -hmm. And well, there was a party at home with all the friends and I went to the toilet and I noticed I had started bleeding. Mm -hmm. And well, to make the story very short, um, well, we learned that the, uh, there was a problem with the baby. Um, the baby would be blind, maybe deaf, 
and possibly with brain paralysis. And the father wanted to interrupt the pregnancy and I said it would be over my dead body. So because we had this very big difference in values um, uh, at this point, well, our relationship didn't like go much further. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the end, this baby who would have been blind was never born. Um, naturally, I mean, I lost the baby, not, not, it was definitely not my decision, but in the end, the baby was not born. And um, it's not something that I understood immediately, but it, it took lots of inner work and the processing. And over the years, it, it made perfectly clear sense why I'm teaching people how to see clear. Uh, I was not able to do that for my own child. Uh, well, she was never born, so we don't know if she really what would have been possible for her. But uh, I do carry this project in her name mm -hmm. when I will go to Oaxaca and, and teach these kids to see clear with their own eyes. In, for me, it's a homage for my own child that was never born. Mm -hmm. And why Oaxaca? Because after, after I lost my baby, I was a walking dead person for months. Um, um, yeah, I, being alive or not being alive was like the same for me at that moment. And I was fortunate enough that uh, I had a colleague from Mexico call me and ask me for a collaboration with scientific research. And I went to Mexico and, well, I, I did the work with her and I also traveled on holidays to Oaxaca mm -hmm. uh, within the time I was uh, in this collaboration. And Oaxaca brought me back to life. I met people mm -hmm. there who opened doors for possibilities. They connected me with my passion for healing and um, yeah, and all these metaphorical inner uh, work to have, again, health and release symptoms. And uh, well, there were lots of magical things happening when I went to Oaxaca and um, lots of surprises. And all of the connections that I made there really brought me back to life. So in a way, starting this Visionary Children project and, and bringing natural vision to children in poor environments to help them thrive in life, like learning school without barriers and being able to play sports and play games and integrate and, and be healthy. It, it, it may sound as I'm giving something, but uh, the way I feel it is like I'm, I'm really giving back. I'm, I'm really returning for the, for the favor Oaxaca gave me of bringing me back to life. So there's lots of um, implications for me in this project. Uh, so I'm extremely happy to be able to, to start this week, actually, this Friday. Mm -hmm. It will be the first, uh, the first action. That's yeah. so amazing. Yeah, that's so special with with all these personal connections and experiences, and and obviously that's you know a, a tragic uh, um, you know catalyst to 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 kind of get you there. But I mean, it's it, you're doing some amazing work, and you are putting into action one of my dreams because I always remember going into eye exams as a kid and seeing a little uh, cardboard box in the corner. Yeah, it's, sorry, uh, I wanted to put more light. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, getting dark here too. Yeah, there was always this little box, a like cardboard box in the corner of the of the waiting room, and it's like, donate your old glasses. We'll send them, you know, to uh, you know, people who who need them, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was always like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, I'm not using them anymore. I'll just, you know, donate them. And that, but then, you know, I started thinking like it, it kind of reminded me of almost like a mission trip in a sense. It's like, we, we go down and we give you these tools and these glasses and maybe an eye checkup or, or something like that. But then, but then we just leave and we don't provide you with any other, you know, assistance, like long-term support. It's just like, here, good luck. And what, what you're doing is so much more powerful because you're actually empowering people to, to not just be dependent on a system or on a, you know, corporation or, or, you know, some, some tool, but it's like, you're, you're teaching people how to, to take it into their own hands and really, yep. I love that, you know, gift of life. I mean, it really yep. does, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. you're going to change so many people's lives with this stuff. And it's really, really, um, it makes me feel so happy to know that, that you're getting that going. And, and hopefully that will be something that, 
does grow in a big way to more and more communities and um inshallah <laughs> please yeah and uh, and welcome i mean if you want to collaborate in any way with this project you're you're very very welcome and i've been aware of actually late afterwards because I never wore glasses, so I wouldn't be faced to these options of donating glasses, but I've been aware of those kinds of projects. And of course, usually they're very well intended. And, oh, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and also, of course, we do know that there's a better solution than glasses, but uh, also thank God that glasses have been there because for mm -hmm. centuries it was the only option. And yeah. if, well, if they can improve uh, uh, quality of life, well, they're, welcome into the picture but then if we have a, an even better way to do it so that people can own their own health and their own vision again well it's even better and with people in these environments with kids in these environments they don't even have access to glasses right. um, they don't have access to surgery um, and sometimes it's an issue of money and sometimes it's not uh, well depending on countries the health systems are really very different from one country to another but also in some of these communities nobody wears glasses so if you're the first one to wear them well you're the weirdo um, and, uh, and there's all these other kinds of social pressure mm -hmm. so if we can like get them back their eyesight without all these other complicated processes well it's even better and it's going to be a, a pleasure and probably it's going to be lots of fun yeah. um we're going to bring uh, things to play with like like we are going to bring post-its so that we can make very easily uh you know like you can work as, as a pirate patch but in yeah. colors with a post-it note uh -huh. it's enough and you can also already stimulate with this or play with you know there's very cheap and easy um balls for the bathroom you can buy like a hundred of them with very little money and playing with balls is a, is a very nice way also to stimulate your vision and uh, anyway we're trying to bring a few tools that uh, are yeah efficient and that don't need like much of course palming and sunning and lots of other things you can do just with natural resources that you have on your own yeah. and we're also bringing the book of a colleague of ours that you know Orit Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's written an amazing book called uh, Veo Bien in Spanish, I See Well. And so we're bringing a hundred of those uh, to yeah, give away. This, this, and this has been possible because of the uh, Natural Vision Improvement Forum that we created in July in Spanish. And we're doing another one in English uh, in short. So if people want to participate and support uh, this Visionary Children project, in English, it will be possible as well. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, if people are listening to this and they're like, "Whoa, I want to support this. I want to, I want to help fund this project." Um, is is that the main way to do it? Is by going like doing the summit or the forum? Yeah, at this moment it is. Probably there will be other channels later on, but at this moment, if they uh, participate in the forum Natural Vision 2020, uh, we're going to broadcast it in English in short. At the moment, I'm still like recording interviews, but as soon as, it, as it's ready, it's going to be out. And participating in the forum is completely free, but if people want to keep the recordings and if they want to support this project, they can purchase the recordings and then, yeah, that's a very good way of, well, uh, educating yourself, getting tools for yourself and your family for life to take care of your vision. And then also um, bringing this gift to the world to people who wouldn't be able to access it any other way uh, to these children. And I do hope also that, uh, that, that, that this becomes a movement and that it grows and that we can collaborate in many other communities in many, many other parts of the world. It would be really amazing. I hold this vision with you, Nathan. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. so exciting. And, uh, and you mentioned that um, the website to get a little more information of that is naturalvision2020.com. Exactly. Right? Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, the website. And, and I'll be adding that to the show notes. And um, I'll probably also link to your main website in Spanish. Um, and I'm, I'm honored to be taking part in the forum and so i will be also having it on my website so you can go to integral eyesight.com and, and get information about when that's going to be available in the next uh the next couple months so thank you very much nathan thank you thank you <laughs> yeah yeah this has been such a good uh good opportunity to to get to sit down with you and learn a little bit more about your experience and uh just makes me even more excited for the possibilities of uh, collaborating more and more in the future. 
It's uh, amazing. I know, I know we're going to be having you on the Better Eyesight podcast in February, so well, people can hear more of you then, but there's uh, hopefully going to be even more that we can work on. So Amazing. I, would, I will be very happy and uh, in a reciprocal way as, as well. I mean, um, very, very pleased to have you collaborate with um, whatever project uh, uh, that, I'm, uh, that I'm carrying and where it makes sense. So very, very welcome. And thank you. Thank you very much for um, allowing me for this uh, exposure and yeah, sharing what I, what I have to share uh, about the toolkit <laughs> that's so wide and, and that, yeah, we, we, we have so many ways to improve our vision that it's always good to, to learn about some more. Mm -hmm. I know, right? You know, it just gets me thinking about how many different different approaches and, and paths we can get to that that better vision. So keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, really good luck to you this weekend getting things started. I can't wait to, to hear back about how it's all unfolding down there. And um, yeah, check out I Noah's websites and, and things that she's going on and, and keep track of her. She's, she's a busy bee as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much love to keep talking with you maybe we can do so another time with pleasure and yeah see you soon in a way all right or another. thank you so much for being with me today i know and we'll talk again soon